Okay, so we're going to have a look at a neo-Malthusian view of the relationship between population and resources. So neo just means new. Remember, Thomas Malthus was very pessimistic. So he had a negative view about the relationship between population growth and food, right? So he believed that population grow in a geometric or exponential manner and food production would grow a lot slower in an arithmetic manner and then everything would turn to a doom and gloom situation so we'd have things like a famine etc all right so looking at the club of rome okay so this was a group of individuals highly educated and experienced so former heads of states scientists economists all working together for the future of humanity and wanting to make a difference okay so we're really talking about the club of rome uh, published book in the 1970s about the limits to growth okay so we're talking about a period of time 1970s now they've used historical data right and they've basically simulated this and they've come up with this in terms of an output as to what potentially could happen here all right so it's really based on the main input here being resources but there are five different things here so we're talking about resources here in this scenario being non-renewable natural resources all right so you can see there's a range of different things so the main non-renewable here that we're going to talk about in terms of natural resources would be fossil fuels Okay, so you can see what's happening here. If we talk about the decline in fossil fuels, any other non-renewable natural resources, what you can see here is there's also a decline in the purple line, which would be eventually food production per capita. And after a period of time, so there'd be a lag time here. So what you've got is this black line starts to increase after this purple line, which is food production, has gone down. So we're going to see that the death rates would go up. So again, a little bit of a lag time here, the population would then start to decline. But this all starts back here with our resources that we need for industry, all right? So these resources are required for industry to produce basically our food. Now that can be in a range of different scenarios. That could be crops, we could be talking about mechanization, we could be talking about the fertilizers, the pesticides, the chemicals that are produced in industry that require fossil fuels as well all right so again this is a scenario that is really looking more towards um, post 2050 and a lot of changes here you can also see in this one here we've got increasing pollution heading up then a big decline here as maybe countries deindustrialize or we look at using alternatives in particular for fossil fuels all right so We've got this scenario here, don't forget there is, as I said, a lag time where resources come down, then food production comes down, then later on, according to this scenario, death rates increase and then the population begins to fall as a result. Now again, this is based on using non-renewable resources as our major input here, and I could argue, similar to Thomas Malthus, who is pessimistic, that we've got substitutes for fossil fuels, such as solar, so a lot of renewable energy here. We've talked about food production already. Okay, so I've got reclaimed land, draining wetlands, vertical farming, a lot of it doesn't need soil. Some of our vertical farming can run on LED lights 24 hours a day, which is pretty much powered by solar. Become a lot more creative, so in vitro or culture, uh, cultured meat, where we don't need fertilizers and pesticides, so they don't need to be produced in industry. So we're really looking at things like the next green revolution. So we could argue like Esther Bozrup that we have had and when we need, right, the demand for something, we create it. Okay, we could also argue today, if I go all the way back to that model, pre-2050, pollution really went up and it started to peak. So pollution, we could argue, is continuing in some nations to go up. However, not all, because some have moved into renewable and then we've got our international agreement such as the Paris Agreement. So this is one scenario that you could argue out of those that potentially is on track to change. Okay, so I hope this helps.